The final class of destroyer escort commissioned by the U.S. during World War II was the 1,350-ton John C. Butler class. These were essentially the ships the U.S. wanted from the start, but couldn't build because production wasn't up to demand. With these ships, production finally caught up. They were essentially repeats of the Rudder O class, except that reduction gearing availability was now adequate. With that availability, the heavy and expensive turboelectric of the Rudder O's could be dropped, and they could be fitted with Westinghouse geared turbines. As a result, they're sometimes known as the WGT type. 83 John C. Butlers were ultimately completed starting in December 1943, 80 during the war, one in December 1945 right after the war, and two as radar picket ships way after the war in late 1955. Main armament was a repeat of the Rudder Rose two 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose guns in two single turrets, one forward and one aft. One triple torpedo tube was mounted behind the funnel. A hedgehog was fitted behind the forward 5-inch gun. Two depth charge rails were fitted at the stern, and eight depth charge launchers were carried. For propulsion, they carried two boilers venting to one funnel that delivered 12,000 horsepower to the two shafts giving them a top speed of 24 knots. Like most destroyer escorts, in 1945, they replaced the torpedo tubes with more medium and light anti-aircraft guns. Speaking of torpedoes, the standard U.S. ship launch torpedo of World War II was the Mark 15. It was essentially a variant of the submarine-launched Mark 14. The only real difference was that it used a larger 825-pound Torpex warhead and had three selectable range speed combinations, three miles at 45 knots, five miles at 33 and a half knots, or seven and a half miles at 26 and a half knots. While adequate, these characters are of course almost laughable compared to the Japanese Type 93 Long Lance Torpedo. Additionally, by being variants of the Mark 14, they unfortunately initially shared its problems. More on that later. Probably the most famous of these ships was Samuel B. Roberts. At the Battle of Samar, while screening the escort carriers, her commanding officer, Lieutenant Commander Robert W. Copeland, decided attack was the best form of defense and joined the Fletcher-class destroyers Howe, Johnson, and Hirman in charging virtually the entire Japanese surface fleet. While this was, ironically enough, the anniversary of the infamous Charge of the Light Brigade, their luck was astonishingly a bit better. Roberts actually managed to mortally wound Chokai, a heavy cruiser ten times her weight. In the meantime, sister ships John C. Butler, Raymond, and Dennis were also protecting the helpless carriers. Tabor Rear managed to save 91 survivors from the destroyers Hull, Spence, and Monaghan after they were sunk during Typhoon Cobra. With her radio antennas knocked off, her crew did this mostly during the typhoon as they themselves were being tossed and thrown around. Three were sunk during the war. Shelton capsized and sunk October 3, 1944 while being towed after being hit by a submarine torpedo. Samuel B. Roberts was not surprisingly sunk October 25, 1944 at the Battle of Samar. Eversol was sunk after being hit by three submarine torpedoes October 28, 1944, while searching for survivors of the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Additionally, Oberrender was hit by a bomb carrying Kamikaze May 9, 1945 off Okinawa. Deemed not worth repairing, she was scuttled November 6, 1945.